Hi everyone, and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. My name is Karen Chanung, and I'm part of the Code of Bears team. I'll be presenting Kinetic MES, which stands for Manufacturing and Execution System. And you might already know how to work in MES in Epicor, but today we'll also show you the Kinetic screens for MES, in case you haven't seen them yet. So in today's presentation, I'll show you some examples of the different screens used to get started in Kinetic MES. I'll discuss many of the fields and icons on each screen to help you get familiar with the main options listed here for Kinetic MES. So we'll be showing um, an example of logging in and logging out in MES, clocking in and clocking out, and the production setup start and end, and actually production start and end activity. So to begin with, we're going to start with logging into MES. The first step for Kinetic MES will be to open your MES URL, your Uniform Resource Location, in a browser. Here we can see an example is you'll have your server name and then the Epicor instance and then slash apps slash ERP slash home slash pound sign slash login and question mark mode equals MES. So the mode equals MES will bring you into the MES screens. Then you'll get the login for Epicor, and you'll enter your usual username and password to get logged into Epicor data collection itself. And then once you get into data collection, there's a little button there that says you can click there to log in. And then a slide out will open up for you to input your employee ID, and you can confirm or change or shift. That's what's the purple box here. And click OK when you're done, and that will get you logged into data collection, which is MES. So the next um, slide here shows how you log out of MES. So notice here in the first picture, you can see the user, the shift, the date, and time. So that's the information that shows you this user was logged in starting at the time of 10.35 on 5.20. If Charles wants to log out so someone else can log in, he can click on the button to log out, which is this button here. Notice the second picture shows the status of the date and time to indicate that Charles is now logged out. It doesn't show his name, it doesn't show his shift, and it just shows the time of 12 a.m. on the same date. So next we'll talk about MES clock in. Um, I think previously there used to be a separate button, but now an MES employee logs in, it also clocks them into the MES screen or data collection. So we can he see here the date and time that Charles is clocked in again because he logged in at that time. Clock out. So when Charles is done for the day or possibly when he's taking lunch, depending on your company's requirements, Charles can click the button to clock out. When I was testing this function, the clock out button was not available until after Charles did some production setup or indirect work. So he had to start activity on either setup or production or indirect work and then end it in order for it to be available to clock out. Otherwise, he could only log out. And again, a slide out window will show up here and will ask for confirmation that you want to clock out and you click yes. And then after that, Charles is clocked out. And again, you can see it doesn't show his employee anymore and it just shows the date and time and 12 o'clock as the time. And it's important to clock out daily to keep your labor details correct and also to not slow down. Make sure you check the date and time often as you work or at least at the beginning and end of each day so that you make sure it doesn't show a previous day. And if it does, you'll want to clock out and then log back in, which will clock you back in for the current date. So here we're going to show the um, starting the setup activities. So on the main data collection screen, you can see on the production tab that you have all the different start buttons shown. And here we'll click the start setup button and a slide out screen comes here to ask you which job you want to start setup on. And if you know the um, job number and assembly and operation for this setup, basically maybe if you have a job traveler and you're going to use that to verify which job operation, assembly and operation to start, you can just type them in there or click the drop down box to select them from assembly and operation and then click OK. And the default resource will um, be filled in and all the other information will be filled in by default. However, if you don't know that information, you can use the small magnifier here in the job to search for a job. And that will give you another slide out where you can 
put in different um, criteria to search for the job that you want to start your setup operation on. So here we put in a couple of criteria. You might use different criteria, but what we did was say to sort by the job number and told it what job number to start at and that we wanted only jobs that are released because you can't report time against jobs that are not released. And then you're going to click the search button. So after you search for your job, the search results will show here and it will be starting at the job I told it to, 2046, and then have any after that that are released. But I really want 2046, so I check that box. And you can only check one here. So you check whichever job you want to start your setup operation on and you click OK. And then that will all be filled in in your screen for the start setup activity, the slide out, and it again shows the default resource here, which can be changed if you'd like to. And then notice also there's a few other buttons on the start setup activity screen here. And the more info, um, let's see, that shows all the details for the job. So you can click the button and see the details for the job in case you needed to know the quantity if you don't have a job traveler by you, for example. And then overrides will allow you to change the resource group or operation. It will show you a list of resources and operations in case you wanted to override what you're doing there. And then the last button there is the documents. And if you click on the documents button, it will show you any files attached to the job that you have permissions to view. And then the last picture here shows the setup job operation is started and is in your, your work queue. So your work queue will show below your buttons here and it will show any active uh, setup or production or indirect labor that you have happening at this time. So to end your setup after you've done the, work, the setup needed for that operation, select the row in your work queue as we show it under the buttons here. Select your specific row in case you have more than one row in your queue and then you click the button for end activity and the slide out for end activity will open for you to fill in details and you'll notice there's um, a lot more in this slide out than what you need really for this setup because I think they use the same um, slide out for you know all the different types of end activity because there's only one button for ending activity and you can be ending production, setup, indirect, or rework. So the main options that you want to fill in for your end activity on a setup operation are going to be your setup percent complete. Here I've typed in 100 and then you can either verify or check the complete box if you're totally done with the setup. So if you put in 100, I think it automatically did the checkbox for complete, but if you put in a lesser percent, then you have to um, <clears throat> check it if you're going to say that it's complete even though you only did 80% or whatever. Then notice these purple boxes, they show your next assembly and your next operation based on which operation that you're working on now. And then when you end your activity, now in your work queue, you're going to see it says no records available. Um, if that was the only one in your queue and you ended activity on it. So here we're showing <clears throat> the steps for starting production and it's pretty similar. You're back on the main data collection screen again and the production card tab here and there's the button to start production activity instead of the starting setup. And then a slide out screen will ask you again the information for the job. And if you know it, again, you can type it in and select from the drop down boxes if you know it from your job traveler, for example. And then you could just continue on and say OK by, to be able to skip past the next two search boxes. But otherwise, if you don't know it, you use, again, the little magnifier that's shown here in the job field. And that will bring up a search screen. And you can put criteria again in your search screen to search for a job that you want to start production activity on. And we did go ahead and do the same job number and released and which job to start at is the same job number 2046. And then I click search. And again, you get the results of your search, which will start at 2046 and have any other release jobs after it. So I'm just clicking the row for 2046 and saying OK. And then that fills in your start production activity slide out to show that job and assembly and operation. Actually, you have to pick the assembly and operation from the drop down because it just searches for the job. 
um, you can either pick it for the from the drop down or I think if you tab you can um, enter the numbers also if you know the numbers and again notice that the resource ID defaults in and you can change it if you need to and you have those same um, buttons here for uh, more information gives you the details for the job overrides lets you override the resource and operation and then documents would have any documents attached to the job for example if you have any PDFs attached to the job like your drawings or whatever able to be viewed by you if you have permissions then you should be able to click on documents to see them and then the last picture here shows your work queue now has a role with a labor type of production and it shows you you know when it was started and the uh, job number assembly and operation etc and your resource etc so all your information is there about your job and now you have it your production started so after some time goes by and you've completed the production for the job operation you're going to end it similarly to how you did for ending setup activity and in your and in your production activity again you're back on your main screen data collection production tab or card they call it in kinetic now and you select your role again in case you have more than one role which one you want to end activity on in this case you're selecting the production labor type and you want to end activity here now this time on the slide out that comes up for end labor activity you're gonna most likely enter some additional data here you definitely want to put down how many current parts you completed in your production run. If you have any scrap parts, you want to put in an amount there. If you have any non-conformance parts, you want to put in an amount there. And you can choose if you want to print tags for the current completed quantity, if you want to print scrap tags if you had any, or if you want to print non-conforming tags if you had any. And that one's grayed out by default until you fill in the rest of the information for the non-conformance if you have permissions to do non-conformance. So, you also have these two checkboxes here for requesting a move or complete. So requesting a move is only really needed if you have advanced material management. That will move um, it to a different queue in advanced material management. And if you want to complete your operation, you want to check your box for complete. And again, we notice we have our um, purple boxes that are just showing you some information here. The next assembly is zero because this job only has the top assembly. And next operation is 20 and it shows you actually the descriptions for each of those two. If you needed to enter any notes in your end labor activity, you could enter notes here also. Then when you're happy with all your entry here, you click your OK button, and then again you'll see in your work queue that there's no records available because now I ended the one that we had going for production. I'll mention that as always it's best to try things out in a test environment so you can get familiar and review the results you want to see in your kinetic MES and see that it works as you expect and like uh, Fred mentioned watch for our videos on YouTube and I want to thank all of you and enjoy the rest of your day and thank you everybody right. for attending and we'll end the session here have a good day all right thanks everyone Bye.